All right, what's up guys? We are back with another video. We are gonna talk about the fuel system. So we're gonna start with using the factory uh, fuel pump assembly hat. Um, so if yours doesn't break, <clears throat> um, the nipple on the top where the feed line comes out of the pump. So I have a return, uh, the returnless pump upgrade that you can put in the factory RX-8 hat. So this pump will support around a little over 500 wheel horsepower. Um, whenever I maxed the pump out, it was 515 wheel horsepower. I was with a boosted setup, so in an NA setup, it will probably make a little more. But I don't recommend it past 500 wheel horsepower. So you can reuse the factory fuel line on this. There is a fuel line piece that I will be adding um, or making available <clears throat> that will go from the factory fuel line to the LS uh, fuel rail. So this will only work with the factory LS fuel rail. It will not be compatible with aftermarket fuel rails. So <clears throat> that is going to be an option. Um, you, I have heard one. I've heard of a person that has used the factory fuel pump. I have not had any luck using the factory fuel pumps and making it support the power so I don't recommend even attempting to use the factory fuel pump one is just it's just too small of a pump and I mean it's a hundred dollars just get the pump that's going to um, support all the power you need and you don't ever have to worry about it having issues so um, this pump is just replacing it inside of the fuel hat you're not changing anything underneath it. You're just simply replacing the pump. So with this pump, you will have to trim the fuel filter that goes, or I guess they'd call it a fuel sock that goes to the fuel uh, pump itself. So what there are two tabs on the original fuel filter. All I use is a razor blade and cut those two tabs off, and then it slides inside of the fuel uh, pump inlet <clears throat> of the pump upgrade that we have that we offer. So that about wraps up everything that you're gonna need to know about this. Um, so now for those that are going beyond the 500 wheel horsepower you're doing um, some nitrous maybe or maybe you're boosting it or who knows. Um, anyway so if you're wanting to go to the fuel the upgraded hat that we offer <clears throat> so we offer it in two different sections uh, or pump uh, amounts so we use a, a single pump upgrade we use as a 450 um, Walbro pump and it will support around 750 horsepower um, I have never maxed one pump out I've always just whenever I did to my twin turbo car I put two in um, it's it's really not all that much more money to get the double one but I mean if you're not going to get beyond 750 wheel horsepower at any point it's it's not really necessary so <clears throat> when using the single pump we do have to um, take care of the Venturi system because in the factory fuel hat b because of how it was designed in their uh, fuel assembly so their fuel block has a Venturi pump in it. So what we have to do is we have to add that in to our uh, fuel hat to where you can um, still pull fuel from the passenger side of the tank because it is a saddle tank. So that is one of the reasons why it's a little more expensive than it could be because of the Venturi pump. That pump alone is almost $100. <clears throat> but anyway, continuing on. So with this setup, we use a 6AN feed and a 6AN return. And then, so this hat is the same exact hat as the return, the double pump. So the only difference is I have a block off that blocks off the other feed line. So if you do decide to ever want to upgrade to the double pump, it will be an option. So you just need to add the fittings and pump in the hat to be able to go to a double pump and then you'll be able to go to the dual 6a and feed 
and the single 6AN return. Um, I've had some people that have told that have been very questionable about having twin 6, uh, 6AN lines. They didn't really feel comfortable with it. I, do, I never had any issues at all with mine when my tuner was doing the, build, uh, doing the tuning. He never complained at all. He looked at the fuel system. Um, he, his name was Justin Covington. He didn't particularly like the regulator that I was using, but it didn't have problems. He didn't have anything specific that he could point out that it was causing issues. So <clears throat> for those that might think, oh, I need a 10 a.m. return, I mean, a 10 a.m. feed, it's just not necessary. I mean, I had a single 8 a.m. for mine, which um, how I did the lines on mine is I did dual 6 a.m. to an 8 a.m. Y block. Or if you have fast rails or the fast style fuel rails, you can do twin 6 a.m. all the way to the fuel rails. Um, it would probably be best actually now that I think about it, to not do that because in case of a pump failure you might starve half of your engine. So it'd probably be best to split it and then um, circle the injector, I mean the uh, the fuel rail. So how I did it is I did an 8 a.m. to the passenger side uh, fuel rail and then it went to the front of the motor, 6 a.m. went to the uh, driver's side fuel rail came back and then I had a 6 a.m. return that went to my fuel pressure regulator and then the, it regulated the pressure after the fuel rail. <clears throat> then it obviously went back to the tank. So um, for, I mean, it's pretty simple right here. I mean, if you're going to be making more than this power, get the double pump. If you're going to be making less than this but more than this, get the single pump. Um, and these will require custom lines. I've used the um, just the AN fittings and hose. Um, I use PTFE, which is a, a Teflon inserted uh, AN line. So <clears throat> that is uh, that's what I've been using. And if you need some pictures of that, I do have some pictures of how I ran my lines. If y'all decide to get the pumps. So, but I figured I'd touch on this a little bit to help um, inform those that are looking to possibly make big power um, or, or just any questions y'all might have, just let me know and I'll be happy to help. So I will see y'all next time.